Great morning, great morning. It's been a few hours or almost a day or so since I've been on here, but I want to share with you again and continue to share and continue to testify and continue to give God the glory, the honor and praise. And I was telling our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Awesome in power is our God. Our God, and that confidence we have to keep holding fast to the truth, which is our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Awesome in power, our God, our God, our God. And our God is the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to look this morning from the scripture we were talking the other day in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 21 through 58. And we're going to um, uh, look at Peter, the second Peter 3 and 11 and 12 and Romans 8, uh, 9 to 11. And then some in Ephesians and in Revelation. <laughs> because our God is greater. See, half of the battle is mind what you're thinking. Okay, half of the battle is what you're thinking. You know, do you, the Lord said He knows those that that believe in Him. He knows those who put their trust in Him. He knows those who have confidence in Him. Okay, and He keeps telling us not to cast away our confidence. So I got three songs. Our God is greater, and then um, I surrender all, and then King of Zion, Judas Lion. Rain, Jesus, rain, uh, rain, Jesus, rain. So that's the song I got to in the tune, y'all. I'm trying to get the tune. And uh, it's so soft, a song. And it's talking about rain, Jesus, rain, uh, king of Zion, Judah's lion, uh, rain, Jesus, rain. And that's what's happening now. We're going to learn that Christ is actually subduing and his power is reigning now because the Holy Spirit is in the world. The Holy Spirit entered in the world for the purpose of reproving the world. That means bringing some correction, okay? The, the rod of correction. <laughs> to reprove is to correct, okay? So the Holy Spirit is, the, is, is really the Spirit of Christ because His Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, they're all one. There's no division between the God's Spirit, God's Word, and God. There's no, there's no division, okay? What His Spirit is and what His Word is and what He is is all the same, okay? All right, everybody can agree to that, okay? Your spirit, and maybe not your words are not always in agreement with your spirit because sometimes we say something and it's a lie. We talk about the other way, taking away from us a lying way because what God says is coming to pass, okay? And his spirit is in, in line. So the spirit takes what Christ has uh, secured for us and the inheritance and help us grow up in it, okay? So the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit which is God, the Word, and the Holy Spirit is all one. Now, who can say that's not true? Okay, okay. So the Spirit is reproved. The Holy Spirit is reproving the world of sin. And we're going to thank Him. I've been praising Him in my spirit uh, already. To thanking Him because the warfare is spiritual. Thank you, Jesus. And the enemy comes to try to take away our confidence that God is able to do what He said He would do. <laughs> Hallelujah, but our God is a greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other, awesome in power, our God, and the Holy Spirit is reproving, okay, the Holy Spirit is here, the, and we remember Jesus said, I, I and my Father will come and make our abode in you, um, okay, the Holy Spirit reproving of the world of sin, okay. And that word reprove means to correct. Reprove the world of sin. We're looking this up. Okay, that just came to mind. Because this warfare is not carnal, but a mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So he is here. The power of God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. The Word is working. Hallelujah. And the Spirit is working. And we're going to see from Corinthians 15 that God is working too. Okay? He, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is bringing to reprove and subdue everything under Christ. Okay? That's what I'm finding out. Okay? And we got to make sure we keep this in our conscious. <laughs> keep this in our, our mind. 
because see, the enemy try to tell you, try to tell us, you know, that that's not so. But we know God's word is true, and God's word cannot be altered, and it will not be altered. Thank you, Jesus. And that was John 16, 8. So we're going to pray, and we're going to talk to our Father. Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Father, we thank and praise you for this day which you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We rejoicing in the God of our salvation, for we know that you're more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all we even ask or think, according to the power which worketh in us. The power of the Holy Spirit, the same power that raised up Christ from the dead, is now quickening our mortal bodies. We declare and decree, Lord God, by Koshe, you are Lord over our life. We submit ourselves to you, Lord, our will, O oh God. We submit to you, Lord, our bodies. We submit to you, Lord God. We thank and praise you for being Lord over our life. We thank and praise you that we are more than conquerors through Christ. We strengthen us, O oh God. We thank and praise you that your word, that you are transforming our minds and redoing us. And, O oh God, renewing us. We ask you to have your way this day, Lord God. We forgive us for thoughts, words, or deeds come true. Anything that the enemy may have planted in our soul, Lord God, or come across our mind, we cast it down if it's against you, what you have predetermined for us to be, Lord God. Cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of thee. My God, fill our mouth with good things. We thank and praise that we declare and decree your glory, Lord God, for you are greater, Lord God. You are the almighty God. There is none like you in all the earth. You are more than capable, O God, more than able to do exceeding abundantly, O God. We thank and praise you, Lord God, able to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with great and exceeding great joy. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, this word that you have placed in our hearts and minds and soul, Lord God, which is the sword of the Spirit. Help us, O God, to be sharpened. Thank you, Jesus. Shabako, sharpen us, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, by Zechariah, we'll be like those quivers, those arrows in your uh, uh, quiver, Lord God. We will be those instruments that you can use, my God, hallelujah, in this season and time, Lord God. We thank and praise you, Lord God, hallelujah, that your perfect will be done not only in us, but in our families, in our communities, in our uh, states, and in our uh, nations, Lord God, all over this world. For every knee shall bow tongue to you and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We thank you for you subduing all things under your feet. We thank you for the glory, hallelujah, that is set before us, Lord God. Help us to continue to press on. And help us to continue to believe the whole fast to our confession of faith, Lord God, and hold fast. Hallelujah. Let no, man de Let no man take our crown, for you are Lord. You are the greater, Lord God, than anything and than all others. You are the greatest. And we thank you for the work that you've begun in us. We thank you and praise you that you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we're going back to... um. First Corinthians, and that's where the thought was coming from. And see, every time you get thought, you can sometimes you get thoughts, and the thoughts will take you into a blessing, and other times they will come and, and try to rob you of your faith in God. But we're going to hold fast to the word of God, which is truth, and because our God is greater and our God is stronger. Okay, so we're going to sing these other songs too as we go through the scriptures. All right. So we, we're using songs, we're using the word, and we're using our faith, and we're using the confidence. And the, remember, he told us that our weapons are not carnal, but mighty through God. So whatever we do, we do it through God. That's why he said, whatever you do, do it as unto me. Thank you, Jesus. And even I hear people talk about food and stuff that's going on. And I'm going to tell you, before we get in here, I'm turning to it. Um, I begin to think about the fact that God said it's a spiritual warfare. And then the Lord began to show me how many people, people like us, that the enemy is actually in. How, how, how he is actually in. Like like um, you see in the story where you had children and who was afflicted by the devil and thrown, one father said this child been this way. It's not just them. At the time when Peter was uh, uh, speaking out, and he's saying that he wasn't going to go to the cross. And Jesus turned around and said, Satan, uh, the Lord rebuke you. Get thee behind me. So we see throughout the scriptures, even when the Old Testament, when Saul disobeyed God, God sent an evil spirit to torment him. So we have been in the realm where uh, entities and spirits and angels and, 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 and all these things are 
intertwined into our lives. It even said when Christ was baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So I believe, this is what I believe, y'all. And it, as time comes on, the, the, the vessels who belong to God, hallelujah, and the vessels who are belong to the devil, is going to become clear. And people think, well, the devil's not going to jump at me. That's not true. Because the adversary is going about seeking whom we may devour. So we have to make a decision to, suit, to choose Christ and come into Christ. And Christ come into us. Because Jesus said, if you have not my spirit, that's the scripture too. You, have, you are none of mine. And all those that are with me, who are not with me, are against me. So therefore, if you're not with Christ, then you are against him. Okay? And you're not with him if you don't have his spirit. Okay? It, it's no ifs, ands, but because it's a spiritual war. Okay, it's a spiritual war uh, fair. Okay, so you have to, a lot of people going around dipping and dabbing in uh, some sin and some this here, and they feel they're neutral. But Jesus said, "Those that are not with me are against me." Okay, so this is what's coming down because this this line is getting very clear. Okay, and I'm gonna get that scripture too. Jesus said, "Those that are not with me are against me." So now, if you don't have Christ in you, okay. If you don't have Jesus Christ, the baptism of the Holy Spirit in you, then you are against God. And yes, some people are appointed to be heirs and there are sheep out there on the hill and Jesus is going back to get them with the preaching of the word and the teaching of the word. So they are understanding they will hear him. Okay. They will hear him and they will come into him. Okay. And that's why the word is preached and taught. So you will know that God is calling you. He is calling you home to come back to him. Uh, and this... Um, those that are not with me, he said, are against me. Okay. Uh, those that are not, those that are, wait a minute, those that are not with me. I'm looking this up, okay. The reason I, I begin to look at this because I began to talk to the Lord about the warfare and um, the, the, at the presence of adversary is going to get more intense, which you can see the atmosphere is surely set up in the darkness of the world, not the daylight and the, not the sun and the moon. In the darkness of the world, you can see how openly the adversary is. But the darker the night, the brighter the light. Okay, God will shine bright. Okay, thank you. Those that are, 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 are not with me, this is what Jesus said. So, so you have to make a decision are not with me. You have to make a decision. You can't say, well, I'm going to be neutral, okay, in the middle of a heated battle. You can't do that. You can't, you can't say, it's, it's war going on, uh, and, uh, and I'm just going to stay neutral. And I'm just going to eat off the both of the tables, off God table and off the devil table. Okay? It's not going to work. You're going to have to be in God and God be in you. Those that are not with um, me are against me. Okay, here really comes. That's in Matthews. This is what the Lord is saying, okay? Matthews 12. So it's, you can't be in between, y'all, okay? He who is not with me is against me. Now, because if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart and in your soul, God said you're not with him, okay? And those that are not with me are against me. It's a war, y'all. It's a war. It's a spiritual war, okay? And then clearly, you have to get into uh, uh, your mind and into your soul and your conscience. I have to accept. I have to choose. I set before you life and death. Choose life. Christ is life. Okay? And the other way is the way of death. Okay? We talked about that the other day too. So we are going into the word for Corinthians the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians 15 beginning at the 21st verse. Uh, for since by man came death by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Okay? So since by man came death, then by man came the resurrection of the dead. Now that right there is gives you some hint. Okay? Man brought death, which is the first Adam. And by the second Adam, who is the resurrected one, we was brought resurrection from the dead. Okay? Now, all of us on this world says it's appointed unto us to die. And after that, the resurrection. So that means we all took part in the first Adam's issues, sin. We all died. 
but only in the second Adam will all be made alive. And even in the second Adam, the first resurrection, because there's two resurrections, the first resurrection and the second resurrection, and they all is, is handed over to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because the first one calls us to die, now the second one will cause us to live. We can live in the first resurrection unto eternal life or rise again because everybody in the grave, everybody in the ocean, everybody who's been cremated, it, all those souls is going to come back before the great white throne judgment. They're all coming up because there's a second there's a first and a second resurrection. So it, it made me think about God who predetermined uh, the beginning from the end. Thank you, Jesus, who knew everything that's in between. Hallelujah, has brought this whole thing uh, into uh, uh, our knowledge, to our understanding, to see that God, when he said he's making a new thing, and he's making this new thing from what was dead, he's now quickening it, okay? So now, we have to get this in our head to understand we must make a decision about Christ, okay? It says, for in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, okay? And they tell you. There was a first, uh, uh, by the first man, death came. By the second man, resurrection came. And it clearly spells it out. In the first Adam, all died. And even in Christ shall all be made alive. It said all. All. So there's a first resurrection and a second resurrection. The first resurrection is for eternal life. Okay. And the second resurrection is, is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Okay. But, because you know what he says too? There'll be no more death. It even talks in the Revelation. The last death we're going to learn here, he's going to put down the last enemy is death. So if there's no death, then what in this, everybody who was dead is now alive. So what does that mean? Okay, so that's way, way above. Okay, but God can help us give us understanding. But every man in his own order shall be made alive, every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, after that, they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the uh, when Christ have delivered up the kingdom to God, and even the Father. So God is the Father, okay? When he shall have put down all rule, all authority, and all power, okay? Christ is putting down all rule, all authority, and all power. Okay? That's what Christ is doing. And I put down here Colossians. I need to put that on here too. Colossians. See, we have to understand this thing is a lot bigger than us, okay? It's a lot bigger than us. We was talking yesterday about the church. Uh, Giovanna was talking about the church of Laodicea and how they were so rich and so they're this and that. But Jesus introduced himself as uh, the one who was faithful and true from the beginning. And then he said, and I am the amen. In other words, from the very beginning, I am faithful and true from the beginning. And I, and at the end is amen. Because I already determined the end from the beginning. I already declared it was. And then we real, realized by that church, they had to see it, that they was a, a in the moment person, in the, in the moment kind of church. You know, for this moment. You know, when I came up, they used to have a little song about love the one you're with. It was like, they were just doing whatever they felt for the moment. Even though if they know it was harmful, they just said for this moment. Now, I, you know, I'll just do it for this moment. That is a, a, a destructive thought from the adversary. Because everyone will give an account to the deeds and the words that we've done in the body. Everybody will give. And Jesus said, in time past, God winked at those things. But now he commands men everywhere. Since the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, he demands everyone to repent and, and turn back to him. Okay? It, it's clear. So this is what we see here. Jesus is going to put down all power. And all the th all put down all rule, any rulers, anybody who's ruling, okay? Wherever you see the word rule is, he going to put it down because the government is going to put on the shoulder of Jesus. That's what uh, Isaiah uh, 9 says, okay? He's this good, Christ himself is putting down. Right now, we're going to see he's reigning. It says Christ must reign until he put down, okay? All authority, all rule, and all power. For he must reign till all that... All he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. So we're going to see it. Christ right now by the power of his spirit and the word of God is reigning. Okay. He is declaring things. He is in the world. God is 
as God was in Christ, reconciling the world back to himself, God, we're going to see here, and the Son, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit is working as one. It says, bearing witness in heaven and bearing witness on earth, okay? It says, he must reign till all has, uh, until he has put all things under his foot. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet when he saith all things are put under him. Hallelujah. It is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things. So here you see the, the, the father is putting everything under the son. For the Bible says God worketh hitherto and then he has committed all things into the hands of his son. The son is the word because everything is made by the word. Everything is unto the word and for the word. So everything is, is summed up to what God has spoken and what God has declared and what God has decreed. And clearly, Christ is the word. He is the living word of God. He is the word of God. And so God has said, he has put, um, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he said all things are put under him, under Christ, or under the Son of Man, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. So he, Christ was accepted when he presented himself as the one and only uh, sinless man, as the one and only sinless lamb. Thank you, Jesus. We told him the other day when the devil said, I, I, uh, Jesus said, this devil is coming, he has nothing in me. Some people thought that meant that I didn't think that... Uh, that I was saying that Jesus didn't have sin. Jesus had, no, they thought I was saying Jesus had sin because he was uh, being tempted by the devil. As a human being, he was tempted on every point. But without sin, he withstood because in him was righteousness. In him was, was uh, 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 divine. He was human and he was divine. So the test was as a human being, which is the second Adam, the second man. We just read the second man came resurrection. Because it said that God, it said in the scripture in the Old Testament, he would not leave my soul in hell because he found nothing in me. God, so the examination of can this seed of the woman from Genesis 3, can this seed of the woman rise? Because if there's sin in him, death bring, uh, sin brings death. But when he was planted in the earth, when he died, there was no sin found in him. There was nothing in him to bring forth death. And he rose with all power. And it said, thank you, Jesus. All things are put under him. It is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall he, the, the son, also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him. Right here. So the son, when everything has been put under him and subject to Christ, which is subject to the word of God. That's why he said, casting down imaginations and bring it into captivity, every thought. I said to myself, how is he going to capture every thought? Every, bring into captivity every thought. Thank you, Jesus. To the knowledge and obedience of Christ. The only one that can capture thoughts is God himself. Because his word, thank you, Jesus, is over. He says, we say, reign, Jesus, reign, hallelujah. King of, of Zion, Judah's lion, reign. And talk, that song talk about reigning. God, Christ's word supersedes every word. Because every word that is not his word is a lie. It's a lie. It's only his counsel. It's only the word of God that will, will stand. And Christ is the word. Thank you, Jesus. That's why he said, the son also shall submit, shall be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all and in all. That God will be all. The son who created, who, when God said, let there be light. When we saw, up, we saw how when God came into the garden, they said, the voice of God walked. The voice of God thundereth. The voice of God is heard. The voice of God is God. And the voice of God came to us, and the word was made flesh. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. And so now everything will come subject to the word of God, will come subject to Christ. 
Thank you, Jesus. Every thought, every imagination, every high thing that exalt itself against him. So that's why you see the sword in, in Revelations coming out of his mouth. Because my mouth will share with his word. He will put down all every lie and every corruption. He will put it down. All he had to do is speak a word. That's why sometimes when I see the things that are happening, I said, Lord, just one word, just one word will do. Just one word from you, Lord. All you got to do is speak a word. Speak a word and it, it will be done. The, the demonical shit, the satirian said, Lord, just speak a word. Your power is just speak a word. That's how he spoke things into existence. And everything that's it, he all he just speak and said, there's no more. Thank you, Jesus. Everything that come up against him, all he had to do is speak. And so now we see Christ is subduing. And what Christ is doing now, he's going after the sheep. As he said in the Old Testament, where the pastors did not go after them. He's going after the sheep. He's going after the sheep. He's bringing them back. Thank you, Jesus. He was de declaring all the, the work that Christ is currently now doing is to, re, to uh, like he told Jeremiah, he is in the midst of preparing to bring his wrath. Hallelujah. He is showing his mercy and showing his grace. Hallelujah. When he came in the form of a man, he came not to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. And then when he ascended and seated, the Holy Spirit came. The Holy Spirit came, which is the power. And it says clearly the Holy Spirit will hear from him in heaven and will show it unto us. Okay, and the Holy Spirit will show you things to come. So it's the Father, Son, and the Spirit of God that's working to bring about not only just destruction, but uh, restoration, salvation, healing, deliverance. That's why he tells us enter into his rest. That rest can only be obtained if we're in him. It, those who are in Christ, then we are in, we are into, into the Sabbath day rest. We enter into the third day, we, the day of resurrection. We enter into the eighth day. Okay, it's the, it's the Sabbath, which is the eighth day Sabbath. Then we enter into that because it's not flesh and blood. Thank you, Jesus. It is spirit. God is spirit and those who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. Okay, the truth is you must be born again and you must be born of the spirit. That's the truth. Okay, because this is this warfare is going on as I uh, begin to move around and God begin to show me there is a lot of people does not do do not even know, even from little babies, that those spirits, those entities are entered into them. That's why Sunday we prayed for the young children. You will not have these, so we laid hands on them. And we declared and decreed, these children you will not have. We back, oh, shit, we depleted the blood of Jesus over them. Hallelujah. Because remember, he clearly tells us to make prayer for one another. Prayer and intercession shall be made. Because through prayer and intercession and laying on hands and anointing, hallelujah, we set these vessels aside for the consecration and sanctification of the Spirit of God. And I believe God going to fill these children early. Thank you, Jesus. Because they're getting the word. Thank you, Jesus. They're getting the word. Thank you, Jesus. And the thing is now, sometimes you can't deal like God can. You can't deal with the old people. you got to deal with the young people and lay hands on them and declare over their life. Some of them, adversary is already in them, in some children. Because working with uh, Bishop Bryant, he said... Uh, and, and a lot of times he would have deliverance services, but when he dealt with children, he dealt with children in the position of anointing them and declaring over their bodies, okay, and declaring over their souls. Thank you, Jesus. Without a whole lot of hoopla, just nice and gentle, anointed them and speaking to the, the powers that have come into them. Some of them, the power said, I came in them when they were conceived. Some children, their parents was uh, uh, prostitutes or, or just whoremongers, okay? Just in all kind of pervertedness, and these children was conceived. But God came, and that's why we pray for our children too. We pray for them too. But a lot of adults, as um, I was talking, and the people will say, well, that's just my way. That's just my old way. But that way could be an actual entity working in the person, okay? You, you, this book called Pigs in the Parlor. By uh, Frank Hammond and his wife, okay? That book will tell you, talk about pigs in the parlor. And they talk about uh, people who, uh, when you first get saved, and the Holy Ghost come in, he cleans and sweeps the house. Because the scripture said, when the house had been swept, 
and the person and, and, and the house was still empty. Then the spirit said, let's go back into our own house. So we know the Holy Spirit cleanses us. That's what he was talking to Israel. Talk about Israel. He had come in Israel and he had healed. He had delivered. He had, he had, he had done all these works. But then as a nation, she had not received him. And then the enemy said, let's come back in and make, bring seven demons worse than our, ourselves. Okay? So you, when you receive deliverance, you must be filled too. Because God can clean you, but you must have the Holy Spirit rest, rooting, abiding in you. And a lot of times people have received the Holy Spirit. The power of God come upon them. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> that's the only way that the enemy leave him. He's not leaving because of you or me. He's leaving because it's greater one. You know, the greater one has come and he's being cast out. Okay. That's how he's being cast out because the power of God is now there. And that's what's happening now. God is giving deliverance. God is giving salvation. And sometimes you see, I had one lady on the YouTube talk about how the adversary comes. But you do need the word because the word is the sword. Okay. And the Holy Spirit and coupled with the word and coupled with God is working. So you, that's a lot of time I tell people, I say, you need the word of God. You are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. You need to have the word of God in you. And it, because inside of you, it, to be washed and clean and swept, you need the word of God. That's why I tell people, they don't do you no favor when they don't give you the word of God. When they're not teaching you, they're not giving you, doing you no favor because you cannot do it without the word. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper. The, the word will help discern. Some people don't even know they have issues in them until they start going into the word. And the word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Okay? It's the word of God. And, and so it says clearly, the word of God. Hallelujah. We're going to go to uh, read it. Uh, the word of God. I got this here. I better go to eleven. I went to four, but I think it's eleven or four. And we're gonna read that right quick, okay? No, the eleven is about faith. The word of God is in uh fourth chapter. Let's go to see this here. Mm. Okay, for the word of God, here it is right here, is <laughs> powerful, sharp, sharper than any two edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing of sunder, the soul and the spirit. So he's talking about the word of God is spiritual. And it, it dividing the soul and the spirit. It's so close between your soul and your spirit. Dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow. And a discerner of the thoughts and intents. That's how the warfare is. It is through the power of the Holy Spirit and the word of God. Okay. Working. To, number one, to get those people. They said, clearly, he said, uh, go and set the captives free. Set the ca How do we set the captives free? We give them the word. Okay? It, how do you open up? It's not tough. I mean, there's physical prison. But it's talking about prisons in when people are captive. Captive, their, their soul is captive. It talks about the Old Testament. They are, are capturing souls. They're capturing souls. It talks about the Old Testament. How they're making things, snares and capturing souls. Thank you, Jesus. And the only way these souls are going to be set free is through the word, which is, uh, is the discern of thoughts and intent. The word of God is going to set them free. The word of God is going to open up prison doors. It is through the word of God that souls are delivered. It says faith come by hearing by the word of God. And how can it hear without a preacher? And God chose the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel whereby men might be saved. So people don't want to preach the gospel because they know when they preach the gospel, people are going to get saved. That's why they're giving you a little bit here and a little bit there. It's not, that's not going to work. Okay, You need to have the full role of God. You need to preach the word. You need to teach the word. You need to talk about the word. And even some then with the word, then you need the power of God. Because some people, when they hear it, they hear the word of God, and still the adversary has got a stronghold on them. They, the power of God, the anointing of God, have to go in there and deal, which is the Spirit himself, the Holy Spirit working with the word. They have heard the word, but the, I've heard sometimes when and, and the devil be stopping the ear. Oh, no. A lot of times you can see it when the devil is fully in a vessel in the middle of preaching, the person is sleeping. Oh, they're going to sleep. They sleep. They're sleeping in church. Any other time, they're wide awake. But in church, they're going to sleep. They're going to sleep because the devil is, is it. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. He's fanning them to sleep. Okay? But the word continues to preach and, and being bombarded, gets in there and begins to change their consciousness and change their word, change their thoughts, change their, their imagination. Thank you, Jesus. 
Because the Bible said, you live by the word of God. You live. You are living. Your soul is living because it's eating the word of God. And if you just eat a little bit here, a little bit there, you're not going to be, you're not going to be strong. He says from milk on to meat. You can't just, and when you eat the meat, then you're able, he said, to discern good from evil. You got to get into the stage of eating the meat. It, it said a bit ability, having their senses exercised, they are able to discern a good from evil. Okay, that's what's coming to me. So you, 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 in order to get, you got to move on from milk, okay? Or the senses is exercise. I'm going to put this down. Then having the senses exercise, okay, to, uh, to discern a good from evil. You got to move on to eat the meat. Okay? So babes, and that's why God blesses the babes. The babes, but you have to be careful when you have the babes to make sure, thank you Jesus, that, that people are not transferring their spirit. Make sure everybody, like in uh, redeeming love and in our faith, you have to have the Holy Ghost, period, to work with your children. Okay, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have the Holy Ghost clearly full of the Holy Ghost to work with children. Okay, because all of us can look back. I told you Lady Dawn was teaching a, a, a women's workshop. Uh, uh, I don't mind. I don't think she mind me using her because God was using her. Okay, <laughs> God was using her. So I'm using her to use the example. And she was talking to grown women and she was taking it back to the time of childhood and town. What happened in childhood? Some pe grown people had been molested and some things had come in them. And as she was talking, the women in the room was crying. I mean, these are sophisticated women because she was getting to their heart. She was getting to the heart because that's where the hard ground is in the heart. And the word is Judah plowing breaks up the heart of the people. Judah plowing so that the word can fall on good ground. But you got to plow the ground. You got to, the word plow, the word plow. Thank you, Jesus. It's, it's because the word is plowing the heart, breaking up the hard heart. Because the word is doing that. Then the word can begin to, uh, the rose and it can set up and the word can begin to fall on good ground. All this is necessary through the word of God and the spirit of God. You can't take it lightly by the word of God. You can't take it lightly. I can't stress that enough. You have to be full, hallelujah, and be uh, uh, not a novice in the word. That's why I said people who are novice in the word of God should not even be preaching. You need to be studying. Thank you, Jesus. You need to be studying. I'm telling you, because the so word of God is the sword of the spirit. It's said up here, okay? The word of the God of God is powerful and sharper than in two, any two-edged sword. The word is sharper. So you need to be able to wield the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, okay? And be able to discern. And, be, and this is growing up in the spiritual realm, okay? And yes, the Lord has been with me and teaching me things. And now the Lord has shown me some things on the spiritual side. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm still in class, okay? Even though I've gone through deliverance service myself, and I've been to the time where God has used me at various times for deliverance. But the God is going to raise up a people this day. They're not going to just do a little here, a little there. There's like um, um, in the Bible Church of Christ, Bishop Brian and then Antoinette work with him. People who, who are called to that position. So whoever God is calling to that position is going to have to go into the word. You're going to have to know the sword. of going to have to know the word. They're going to have to have the word in them because the Holy Spirit will bring it back to them. The Holy Spirit, he said, you won't have to worry about when you get ready to speak. The Holy Spirit will speak through you right then. He will tell you what to say right then. Thank you, Jesus. Because we need the Holy Spirit in us to talk right then. What do you want me to say? What should I speak to this entity, Lord? And then the Holy Spirit will give us those words because the Holy Spirit... And the word is working together. Okay. So now we're back in here in Corinthians. And it says, um, when Christ has put down all things. Okay. But every, um, let's go on down here to verse 28. The son uh, also himself be subject unto him um, that has put all things under him. That God may be all and in all. So Christ, which is the word, is working for God. The Father and the Holy Spirit, they are one. Okay. Else, what shall they do which are. We're not going to go past that. We're going to do that. Okay. We're going to end it with God is uh, maybe all and in all. Now, everybody can understand God is omnipresent, all knowing, and all powerful because He knows everything. You think He want to know about all this other stuff? You think He want that? No, He's going to clean that stuff up. 
It's not, you got the power. He's going to clean all of it. He's going to clean all. He said that God will be all and in all. Okay, so God going to clean all this stuff up. He's going to clean it up. And Christ has come to do work. He said, my father worked hitherto, and I up here to now, and now I'm working, which is the word is working. And thank you. When the word thing was rose on the third day, with all power was given unto him, everything is being subdued unto Christ. Okay, so if you're not serving, serving Christ now, you, you might as well do it now. Because Jesus done told you, those that are not with me are against me. You don't want God, God to think you are an enemy of his. Okay, 2 Corinthians, I mean 2 Peter. 2 Peter 3. Okay. And that's what got me this morning thinking that Christ is subduing. And all powers and all authority and all things, he is subduing. And we literally read the other day that he, that manifold wisdom of God is being made known unto principalities and power. Okay, okay. And it says, um, I'm reading Second Peter, um, first Peter, Second Peter, three. This is important because see, this is a spiritual warfare. And we have to decide if we're going to be babes in Christ and grow up and know how to wield the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, or we're going to be the enemy of God. Okay? So if we're the enemy of God, you know that ain't going to work. And you can't be uh, on, on both sides, y'all. It's not going to, you're not going to because you, you the riches of this world. I want to be rich and I want to be rich. This world is coming to know. Okay? Second Peter, you better uh, get yourself ready for God. Because God, Jesus is coming. And at verse uh, 11 of the third chapter, it says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the day, for since the uh, fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were uh, from the beginning of creation. Now, they know that's not uh, true. From the beginning of creation, you don't have the flood. You don't have the Tower of Babel. You don't have the time God done rained down on Nineveh. You don't have it. How can these people say this here? They don't look back from the beginning. It said things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. From the beginning of creation? No, it's not. You can just look at the scripture. This book will tell you. And look at the kingdom. Babylon is no longer. Persia is no longer. Me, the means is no longer. Rome is no longer. Okay? So how can they say this statement? That things continue as they were from creation. They're, they're ignorant of, the, of the, this history. History would tell you. Thank you, Jesus. How many countries rose up? And how many countries came back down? How many kingdoms came up? And how many kingdoms come down? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just keeping up with secular history. Okay? Okay, how many places? Uh, what, what's the one they said? Um, uh, uh, Atlantis, Atlantis. You know, one that had all these books and stuff, and and then a volcano erupted and, and rained down. I looked up that. that that's in his in history. Not even just in the Bible. And these people say they say uh, things is the same as they were from the beginning of creation. Now every uh, history buff can tell them how many times. The Atlantis and and, and and place where they had all them books and stuff and, and all the Greek things and, and all them things and how to, how the archaeologists find all these temples and the, uh, the Mayans over here in, the, in certain countries, the Mayans people, and they build all these pyramids and they, the people are gone, y'all. So things are not continuing continue as they were. God has been sending judgment, okay? But God is getting ready to change the entire globe, the entire world. He said they're going to be a new heaven and a new earth. He getting ready to change it all. And we got opportunity through Christ, by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, to be a part of that kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? It says, for this they willingly are ignorant, Paul says. Peter said, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the waters were in the water. That means they're ignorant of the flood. Okay, that's what Paul said. They're ignorant. They willingly are ignorant. They just, well, you know, it's always been, even their own fathers and mothers ain't even here. Their uncles and aunts and all who were so, and some, even if you take like American history, American history have, you know, um, uh, uh, what you call some of the, the, the American uh, cowboy, you know, uh, uh, idols. 
you know, oh, they was this and they was that and they was this and they just, they just talk about them. And even some of the people, they, they still look to. These people are dead, okay? And these people did not die in Christ. They did not, not die in faith in Christ. They are going to come up in the second resurrection. And God only knows what they're going to be when God raised them, when Christ raised them up, okay? Wherefore, it said, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. They're ignorant of it, okay? But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Against the day of judgment. So this world will be on fire. It says reserved unto fire. And I think it says the world is going to be on fire. The whole world. And so you and can flesh and blood stand in fire, y'all? So we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fire. It didn't even hurt them. So God can have a being created and in his presence their fire won't hurt. but the world it said the earth will be on fire the earth will be will uh will be on fire okay so how are you going to stand in that fleshly body okay the earth being on fire i gotta look that up okay because a lot of time people think okay i'm just continue on but it says the people willingly are ignorant just willingly ignorant, seeing everything continue. You clearly, archaeologists can tell you there was a great flood. They don't come to the conclusion there's a flood. Was a flood, okay? So the world, and it says here, even now, wherefore now by the same word, the a world, the heaven and earth is being kept, reserved unto uh, unto the fire against the day of judgment. And perdition and ungodly men. So God going to bring some fire. Not water. It won't be water. It's going to be fire next time. Okay. The earth reserved. Okay. Um, earth on fire. I'm going to look at this here. <clears throat> the earth on fire. <laughs> Somebody put this here. The earth on fire. Imagine the whole entire earth. The scriptures talk about the earth being on fire. Okay. What does the Bible say about the earth being destroyed by fire? And it's, you can look it up. And he took him into Second Peter third, which we have here. Okay, but there's more. The whole planet on Earth being on fire. God is a spirit. Fire ain't gonna hurt him. Okay, and a new creation, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were in the fire. It didn't hurt them. They didn't smell like it. So fire didn't hurt them. Polycarp, which was one of the martyrs in uh, over there in the uh, seven churches of Asia, Polycarp, which is in uh, Church of Smyrna, he said they were burning him. He was a the the a, 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 um, overseer. Or the bishop of the church of Smyrna. And they said when they was looking at him, they got mad because they didn't see the fire consuming him. It was glowing, they said, like a candle. That way went into history. It, he was glowing like a candle. So they got mad and stuck him with a spear to kill him. Okay? We're talking about a God who control who is a consuming fire himself. And we have the audacity to think that we are gonna come up against him as human beings. That's a lie. Somebody is lying to themselves, okay? Somebody is lying. It says here, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering. That's why, that's what's delaying in our time. Now, I'm not 200 years old, okay? I'm just 73, going to be 74, okay? That's young when it comes to eternity, Okay? And even so, sometimes in this world, you're like, I'm like Paul, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I don't want to be rushing my time if I'm not ready. You got to be made whole in Christ. You got to be transformed. You got to be renewed. You got to do the work that Christ called you to do. Because he's going to pay every man according to his work. So when you was working before in, in the kingdom of darkness, you need to be working in the kingdom of light. That means you need the Holy Ghost, okay? The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. And what is <clears throat> it's, it's getting me is... Uh, which we know God is working in us both to will and to do of his pleasure. God is working in us. I will walk in you and I will talk in you. In times past, he was uh, uh, with them, but now he is in us. Okay. And then so he said that uh, once we, the Holy Spirit come in us, God himself is working in us both to will and to do. So that's what we have to make sure that, okay, Lord, what do you have me to do? And one thing we have to say, um, we're going to sing this song before we go. I'm probably going to do all three songs. The one is, um, 
I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender That's what it called and said, all to Jesus, I surrender. Until we give it all to God, my children, and whatever God purpose for them, my will is your will be done in them. Thank you, Jesus. And your will be done in me. And your will be done in my family. And your will be done in my community. And your will be done in the lives of everything that moves and creepeth upon the earth. Your will be done. God's will be done. That's what we got to come down to. There is the will of God. And it clearly said God has put everything in the power of Christ. And he is subduing everything under Christ. Okay? So we're in uh, 2 Peter. And then I says 11. Seeing then that, they, that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening to the coming day of the Lord. Wherein the heavens being on. This is what I'm looking for you. On fire. Uh, and shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to the, his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we ye look for such things, be diligent that you may be found in him in peace. <clears throat> you better have peace with God. That's what the atonement, at one meant. Atonement means at peace with God. Make sure that you may be found in him in peace, without spot and without blemish. And, and account a that the long suffering of the Lord is the and put it to the account that God is long suffering and account unto account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. What is he waiting for? He waiting for them souls. He know the number. Okay. He know, see, didn't he just tell us a day, a day is like a thousand years? Okay. Look how many souls are born in a thousand years. Okay. We are born in the last part of the 2000 years. Because since uh, AD, uh, for, from BC to AD, which was the uh, pivotal point in history, changing from before Christ to after Christ, that was a pivotal point. That was a, 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 a paradigm shift in everything. Then the Spirit of God is in the world. And it's been over 2,000 years. The Spirit of God has been here. And the Word of God, even though they try to stop it, people who in, in other religions say this, the Lord came to me. Some people in Islam, the Lord came to me. Some people in, in different religions, God came to me. And the people, all, look at the people who were in other religions, y'all. They wasn't even in Christianity. And God himself, by the Spirit of God, is bringing them people in. Now, over here in America, claiming to be one nation under God, individual with liberty and justice for all, is, is moving away from Christianity. Okay? But a lot of nations where the people, was a, it was a crime to preach Christ. Those souls are, have, have gone in and, and received Christ, even at the threat of death. So why would God take you over here when you just over here playing around with God and playing around with church? He got plenty of people over there who are genuine. He got plenty of people in, in China, in, 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 in Asian countries, in, 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 in Africa. And he got, in all the continents, he got genuine people who to pick up the Bible is a threat. Now we got the ability to preach the word in season, out of season, reprove and review, and we just do a little bit. We just do a little bit. We just do a little bit. And he going to take you? Okay? They talk about being full of the Holy Ghost. I, I'm just putting it out there. See, this nation, I've been in this nation, and I got to say, I was born in 1951. Okay? All right? My mother was born in 1930. So she got to, she got to know we're in the time of the Holocaust. She was already in the world. Okay? When they was killing whole, a whole group of people. She, and, and before then, the people had gone to Africa. 
okay, and bring people. So you had a lot of uh, things going on in this world since the day of Pentecost. Just look at the history and some of these nations who rose up and we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Alexander, all the different people who were just, just, just uh, statues of them, you know, and just, just putting statues of them. Those people are crumbled. And they're dead, and if they did not die in Christ, they are going to be ro uh, 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 rise on the second death and come into damnation. They're going to get the judgment because everything that's dead is going to come alive. And you either and Christ, since the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God has been here. The invitation. So this is the last generation. Two thousand years is the last generation of people. Who in times past God was winking and certain people he brought in, okay? But this time, in fact, the population of the human race, they will tell you, it's the, this is the greatest amount of people in the world. This is the greatest amount of people, okay? So we have opportunity to be saved. And for us not to be saved, talking about we playing around because we want to eat off the devil table and then come over here and ask God for healing. When something happens, we're in trouble. And it goes for my family, too. It goes for everyone. It goes for me. It goes for my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my children. If they don't want to be saved, we try. The Bible said be gentle. The servant of God must be gentle and apt to teach. It said be apt to teach. Okay. We're trying to apt to teach. <laughs> we're trying to be apt to teach. A be, a be able to teach. Of course, people have some issues, but I'm just teaching out of this Bible, King James Bible. I have different concordance, and I've had other books and other Bible. This has been going on since I was in my 20s. <clears throat> and not always for the purpose of telling somebody else anything. It's so I would know. But then God will raise us up so we can be a, 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 a vessel to be used by him. And it's my use is just telling my testimony. Because I was young. I was a teenager. Okay. And I left from the south to come to the north and came into a junior high school in the Bronx, 55, which was controlled mostly by gangs. Okay? It was controlled mostly by gangs. <clears throat> and people even got killed in them gangs. Okay? And the teachers was afraid uh, because the students, the teenagers in junior high school was violent. Violent, y'all. But God kept me through that. <clears throat> He sent my sister ahead of me, and she was a fighter. She actually had a spirit of fighting in her, which she got delivered from that spirit when she got saved. And the voice came out of her. <laughs> a man voice came out of her. Does that mean she had a spirit of fighting? And she was, uh, she was fighting. She could jack people up. So sometimes you see people doing things. It's not just them. It's a spirit in them because there's spiritual warfare going on. You see children, uh, 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 like my son Jonathan, when he was little, he would be lying. He'd just, just lie. He said, Jonathan, that's a lie. That's a lie. Now, how did a child start off lying? Yeah, children do little things sneaky because they caught with a cookie, but it's just, just lying. That means the spirit, the antichrist, already, the devil already got his foot because he's the father of lies. If we tell lies, that's why he said, Lord, take, uh, take me from a lying way. When I declare it to something and it's a lie, God said, that's not going to happen. It said, let every man be a liar and God be true. That's the scripture too. Let every man be a liar. This is scripture. Let every man be a liar. Because that means whatever you're seeing, if you ain't seeing what God said, then you're a liar. You are a liar if you're not seeing what God says. And, and, and listen, we talked the other day. The, you, you two before this here. You are here. I'm going to become rich. I'm going to become this. And God said, not so. Because he didn't want to give you power to get rich. He didn't want to give you power to get wealth. And if you haven't consulted with God, you're not going to be rich. He said, that's a lie. Let every man, okay, uh, be a liar. So what God is saying, when he said he's going to bring every thought and he's going to put down rule and authority and power. When he said he's going to do that, everything that we purposing to do, if it's not in the will of God, then it's not going to come to pass, y'all. Because somebody is a liar, then God. Because Jesus said, God, he said, God will be all and in all. He will be all and in all. So if your plans is opposite of God, you, as far as God is concerned, you're a liar. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm telling you. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm, I'm learning here. And, and a lot of times people think what they're going to do. You better run it by God first, okay? Run it by God. Lord, is this your will? <laughs> is this your will? Because in him we live, move, and breathe, and have our being, okay? 
And so those, uh, since we living, moving, and breathing, and having our being in him, he getting ready to clean the whole entire atmosphere. <laughs> Since we living, moving, and breathing in God, so he said, you know what? I'm getting ready to clean everything. Everything that's not like me, everything I have not established, I'm taking it out. Because he's going to be all and in all. Isn't that making sense to you? God is all, and he's omnipresent, all-knowing, and all-powerful. So since he, we are living, moving, and breathing in him, and we are a cancer, we are corruption, we are a rebellious, a witchcraft. Don't you think he said, I'm going to move all that stuff out? That's why he's going to bring every thought and every high thing into captivity. He's going to cast down vain imagination and bring into captivity every thought to the knowledge and obedience of Christ. He's going to subdue, subdue all things because y'all are living and moving and breathing in him. He's omnipresent. We living, moving, and breathing in God. So you think you're gonna stay with all that stuff you're doing? No, he's gonna get. He's here gonna with fervent heat. Second Peter, the third chapter. Okay, and it's, 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 it's the exaltation to steadfast in. But the last part, willing to ignore ignorant of those the world. They ignorant of the word of God. Don't be ignorant of the word of God. Look at the history, history. When people boast in how mighty they are, how much evil they can do. And them same souls dead. They same souls are dead. And they're going to face the, the, the Christ. They're going to face the word of God. So let's not be ignorant. It said they were willingly ignorant. Let's not be willingly ignorant. It said they, for they willingly are ignorant. Let's not be willingly ignorant. Okay? Because in God we live moving and breathing. And God is going to get everything out of him. Jesus clearly said he's going to put all and God going to be all and in all. That part got me too. And it said Jesus is reigning to put all and subduing everything. So God will be all and in all. That got me. That's Corinthians 15. 21 from God going to be all and in all. And that go with in him we live and moving and breathing. Okay. So if you are moving in God right now. And you are in sin. And you are corruption. And you're doing evil. God is right here. Is going to deal with you. Right now you're giving opportunity with your witchcraft and your voodoo and your stuff to get saved. But if you decide you don't want to be saved, then the wrath of God is laying out there. Okay? But we got a chance to turn. Because a lot of people who have dealt in witchcraft and voodoo have turned to Christ. They have come. They have come in him. And on some people who are just ignorant, ignorant, he said, willingly ignorant, is out there and the wrath of God is going to be upon them. Let's, let's cast off these filthy garments of, of, of unrighteousness and be clothed in Christ. Okay, I know this is long, but this is good because I want to, to understand what's happening right now. You say God is patient for salvation. Okay, all these scriptures talk about his, his patience. Bringing people out of other religions and other arts and stuff and bringing them. Paul, in the time of he was preaching, he said these people brought all their books and their crafts of witchcraft and they burned them. People who are in these kind of things is burning them things up. They're knowing there's, there's no part of no one is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Awesome in power, our God. Our God. Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God. Hallelujah. Is stronger, wiser. And in him we live and moving and breathing. And if you are not coming and conforming to Christ, then the wrath of God is laid up for you, okay? Clearly, and say the fire, Second Peter, where the earth it would be on fire. So I hope that you would, just like me, I went through when I was young, coming up, people were talking about, what's your horoscope? I came up in the 60s, okay? It was in the 60s, and it was some, oh, yeah, my horoscope and this and that, and then I was, you know, and figuring out my little numbers and you know, what kind of little stuff you was doing, you know, evil stuff. <laughs> and God saved me. But he wants all men to be saved. He want everybody to be saved. You don't have to be driven in, 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 in crap. They think, well, you know, um, well, I don't see God. You, God is moving by his spirit. It won't be by might nor by power, but by my spirit. So the Holy Spirit is here. The spirit of God is here. The Holy Spirit is here. Reproving the world of sin and unrighteousness. Okay? The Holy Spirit is here. I think I looked that scripture up. But it will put it down. Okay? The Holy Spirit is here to correct us. To help us to understand where our error is. 
And that's why we think. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you that this word has come forth. It's been a blessing to my soul. I pray it be a blessing to your, your people, Lord God. Even your sheep that's out there, they have not come in yet. We pray that this word will fall on good ground and that our stony hearts will be touched, Lord God, that you will give us a heart of compassion and, and a, a flesh that we can be able to feel and understand, Lord God. That it's your patience and your long suffering and your, your faithfulness toward us, not willing that any of us should perish, Lord God. We thank you for this dispensation of grace, this time for grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. We thank and praise you, Lord God. The time is coming, Lord God. Hallelujah. When the time of the Gentiles will close, Lord God. We pray, Father, in this season and this hour that our families, hallelujah, and our loved ones of God will come unto you, Lord God. We deep up, oh shit. We're trying to live a life before them, Lord God, giving our testimony, sharing some some of the secret things that happened to us, Lord God, that maybe they will hear and understand that you are merciful, you are long suffering and patient toward us, not willing to any should perish. Even when we don't want to want it to, to seek you ourselves, Lord God, you sought us and you delivered my soul, even when I didn't even want to be in this earth. I thank you and praise you, Lord God. And there's many souls that are in this condition, and I pray this word will reach them, Lord. Young people, teenage people, Lord God, whose who's, they be on the cushy, Lord, whose bodies and whose mind is trying to draw them into a deep of darkness, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that this word would reach them. Young people, teenage people, Lord God. I was a teenager in a school where there was violence and there was gangs. My God, and I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this word would reach them early in life. Reach them early, Lord. For you saved me in my early 20s. There's some you need to save earlier than that. My God, earlier than that, Lord. Fill them with your spirit, that they will have the power of the Holy Spirit in them. Equip them in your word, Lord God. Give them your word that they'll be able to fight. As the time go on, we know that we're going toward the present toward the end, Lord God. That's coming to the end. And we, hallelujah, are working and we pray that this word will reach out and touch the souls of young people everywhere wherever they may be, especially our children. And our children, oh God, hallelujah, that's being exposed to various things in the school system and in the communities, Lord God. We pray, Lord, that you will keep them, those especially in public education, Lord God. Remember those children. Lord, help the Sunday schools and those who teach them. Give them the word of God that was established. I remember what kept me and what drew me. At 14 years old was the Lord's Prayer. My mother taught me that when she gave us away at seven. She kept saying, remember this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, she made us stand up and recite that. And through that, Lord, even when the enemy came upon my soul in the night, Lord God, it was that word that made me, hallelujah, be able to withstand. I thank and praise you that it's your word, which is a shield and a buckle, your word, which is able to make us wise. I pray that your word will fall on the ground of your young people, Lord God. Even my children, they was raised in the church, baptized. And I pray, Lord God, whatever word that you have placed in them, to stir up that word. Stir up that. Bring back to their remembrance the word which you've spoken to them, Lord God. Bring it back to their consciousness, Father, in the name of Jesus. When I go share what you have planted, Lord God, we pray that you would give increase. Bring their soul back in the consciousness, O oh God, of what you have spoken to them. We lift up our children, our grandchildren, our great grandmother, oh Lord. We lift up our families, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that your will, your way, and your word will be done in us, through us, in the mighty name of Jesus. In all of your children who are in a backslidden state, Lord God, bring them back. Hallelujah, Lord God. Help them to remember how you kept them in the hard times and in the difficult times when the mother and father was not there for them. As you did with me, Lord God, that you are able to keep them. I pray for the returning of every backslider that's in you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. That your divine that that your divine purpose and plan will be done in them and through them as we commit our calls and our issues into your hands. We thank and praise you for your faithful and able to keep that which we commit into you and to present us false before the presence of your glory with great and exceeding joy. You are the only wise God to be glory, majesty, dominion, and power according to the power which worketh in us as we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, I'm telling you, y'all. This is this is this lesson really develop requires uh, he must reign until he has put down all enemies under his feet, rulers, authorities, uh, powers. So Christ is reigning down. 
until he has put everything down. And then when he has subdued everything and the power of Christ is down and Christ is here in the Holy Spirit, God, the word, the Holy Spirit, they're all one. Okay. And it's bringing souls. Look at other foreign countries. I can't say that enough. And we over here in America. Okay. We should be mindful of the liberties that we have. Nothing is stopping you from reading your Bible. There's nothing stopping you. Nobody's coming in your house snatching your Bible out. Okay? Right now, we're at a time. But it could be a time if some other government come on over this government. If another government come over this government, then you won't be able to read your Bible. Because it would be darkness. They won't want you to read your Bible. Now it's free and liberty. Okay? Be mindful. In him, the Lord, we are moving, breathing, having our being. And he done said he's going to bring everything into captivity to the knowledge and obedience of Christ. And so you might as well just give up right now. <laughs> I love you. God loves you too. That's why he said his, his long suffering is towards for salvation. He wants people to be saved. Okay, he wants you to be saved. He wants me to be saved. He wants my children to be saved. Okay. So... Push the like button. Encourage us to come along. Sorry it was long, but this is what's on my heart. It's been on it for two days, y'all. Okay? I was going to do yesterday and sing, um, Our God is Greater. And I was saying, um, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. You know that's the tune is all, okay? But that's what I do surrender to him. <laughs> I love you. God loves you. I pray that this is a blessing to you. And listen, clearly, Second Peter, the whole earth and the thing will be on fire, y'all. People think they're just going to just keep on going. And everybody who's dead going to rise. Every single person who died is going to rise. They're going to rise in Christ or they're going to rise in the second resurrection. Either way, everybody who dead going to rise. So you be crying because they dead. The Bible said they going to rise again. Okay. I was crying. I was crying so much with my mother. And the Lord gave and showed me. He showed me. I saw her in white raiment. And I was. He said, you can't talk to her. But he let me see her. Oh, she was beautiful. I was like, oh, my goodness. She had on righteousness. Now, she didn't have a crown yet. Because it said that, that you see, they you when you up in that realm, you're already righteous because you wouldn't be up there, okay? But then the crowning, he's gonna give us crowns and rewards, okay? So she didn't have a crown on, but she definitely had a robe of righteousness, he had righteousness on. So we thank God for letting me see her and see, slap your little ones are going and died in Christ, they, they're in a better place than you. <laughs> You crying because they're dead, but they're in a better place than you because you still got the labor and, and, and to end. He that do it to the end, the same shall be saved. You know, he that endure to the end. The, 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 my mother died in Christ. Clearly. With the gift of speaking in tongues, I'm telling you, in Christ. Some of your parents died in Christ. Some of your children died in Christ. They, they, are, they are in a better place than we are because they're with God. And what we hear, we're still here with this world and this stuff. Is wrong. Please pray for me as I pray for you. Pray for uh, my house, my sons, okay, as I pray for your families too, okay? And I've come to the conclusion, God, Christ is reigning. Reign is the king of Zion, Judah's lion. Reign, it's not the tune, but it's it's, it's a good song on the, on the YouTube Uh talking about rain jesus rain rain jesus rain and so that's what we're declaring he is right now he's reigning he's subduing and he's putting things down and we thank him for the power of his spirit thank you and we thank god when you feel the presence of the spirit of god who is in the house in the church the power of god is there thank you jesus and i'm telling you it would not be done without the power of god and the word of god so please push the like button. Encourage us to come along. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you too. Amen.